um, I became kind of really obsessed with truth and, and beauty and asking some of the bigger questions. I had some experiences within the church. Uh, my mother's side of the family is Anglican, and my dad was Baptist. Um, so we were involved in many different worshiping communities um, over the, the years. But I felt like this guilt, this pervasive guilt, like a worm, basically, worthless. Um, now super, super strong, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it was my interpretation of what I was hearing in uh, some of the, the church communities that I was in, but I became disillusioned with, like I sensed there's something more, and I, I didn't want to, you know, just feel like that's the way the world was, uh, and leave it at that. So uh, I was reading theology, I began writing this music based on the parable of the prodigal son. I was reading uh, Henri Nouwen and uh, finding some really cool things in there. But I became aware, I think, over time um, about this grace, grace which proceeds. And I can think of, uh, well, I'm lucky to hang out with Brian and listen to our sermons here. Um, so I'll just tell the story and then we'll get back to the grace. I ended up coming, graduating from school, coming back here, and they were looking for um, a musician for the community and got connected because somebody had mentioned I was doing hymns and um, writing all this, this stuff. But uh, I've been here for five or six years uh, now. Um, so, you know, Brian always talks about the goodness of life. Uh, that God, God created, that creation was made and it was good. Uh, and um, I wanted to participate in that more and more fully. And another uh, thing, instead of having to, it's, it's not a have to, it's a get to. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ came and then was resurrected. And so, so that I get to participate in the goodness of, of life. Like, absolutely. There's a kind of rhythm of like, being open to and receiving that grace and then responding. There's kind of just there's this one community that I'm so so grateful to be a part of. Uh, so there's still that rhythm of grace and response. Uh, or maybe that's a creative potential. Yeah, so I, I just think that Jazz is really cool because, like we've talked about, because it celebrates that kind of authenticity. Uh, the, the word I might use is integrity. Like, um, the integrity of the musical process, the kind of deep learning and the long-term uh, way that we're, we're coming back to these things over and over again, the way we're uh, the way we're looking at history and trying to um, use the tradition, learn learn the tradition, and contribute to the tradition in a positive way. Um, those are all things that I think jazz has to offer uh, specifically. And uh, yeah, just just the fact that like it's relational. Uh, I. I basically think that to see the face of Christ in another, um, to you know, to do something kind, to to seek for, to look look for like justice and ways of being just and kind and loving and participating in those kinds of fruits, fruits of the spirit. Um, that's what we're going kind to of call call to do collectively. Um, but then, what we've been kind of learning, I think, and discussing a bit, is that it seems paradoxical because it seems like the world's getting faster, and there's more technology, and there's more diversity, and there's globalization. So it's like, 
having to sort that stuff out in this really big mess, uh, mess together. Uh, it, it, it's very painful. For, for, uh, but uh, at times, but I think it's ultimately uh, going to be uh, keep evolving in this way uh, towards a fully reconciled um, community. Right? What struck me was the way the word community came up a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> yeah. Very vital. Aspect um, for yourself as well as the musician and others. Mm -hmm. In your sense, you said to use music to create a certain quality of community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I like your, both in, in the performance, but also to kind of invest that in the world. Yeah. 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 Or like recognizing that music has been such an important part of the music, yeah. but that sometimes in this culture, <coughs> at least the way we're thinking of music, with the, the breadth and depth that it can have, like when you do listen to some of those masters play, mm -hmm. and that the fact that that's not celebrated more widely, or something like that, mm -hmm. as like as really being so valuable, like socially or in terms of spiritual development. Uh, yeah, but. Well, one of the pieces that, that I remember you and I beginning to talk about is that that sense that you and I talked a little bit about this as I begin to understand how to listen for some of this stuff. Is some of that depth the people making the music probably didn't have, they might have had a gut sense of it, but they certainly didn't understand the emotional interaction. But it's, it, it's there for, um, for us to find that, find new depths that the Spirit is taking us to in that music as listeners, and then work that into our performance um, and then offer that to the community and have the community take it perhaps in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. But that space piece that you, you guys are talking about rests, um, I think a uh, musical rest is the one thing, but to, to use that space to be intentional about creating space for uh, for some some response that you hadn't intended. Uh -huh. So it's like, yeah, you do your art and then you, you put it there, <laughs> and uh, you're going to get feedback of all kinds, but that feedback is actually part of the art, mm -hmm. art itself. So, mm -hmm. so that's <laughs> not my idea, but I think Chris McCann from Montreal. He's just like, you have, to, you have to be okay with the fact that uh, that's not up to you at all. But that's actually one of the really beautiful things that I heard from what you were saying, right? So mm -hmm. we're gonna keep keep trying to to um, um, offer something to the community, and then see what happens. You know, and then we'll go back to the garden. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of analogous to light. You know, light in and of itself is just there, <coughs> but it's when it reflects off. That, um, that, that maybe or whatever it would be. So, in the same context, you know, like you're saying, you put that out there for music. And it's obviously the audience and the reflection of the other musicians. It's context, it's the relationship, etc. And reflects back what you know, that is. Kind of like, like, that's very true. Because you talked about that in our group too. So. Mm -hmm. 